Note the distribution of the episcleral vessels around the limbus. In this case, we're implanting the eye stent prior to phacal emulsification. The head has been turned and microscope tilted, and we have a Swan Jacob lens to visualize the nasal angle. In the supranasal angle, we're going to enter the meshwork at a 30 degree angle, noticing the self trephinating tip approaching the inner wall with this 30 degree acute angle. This allows adequate entrance into the canal, avoiding trapment within the inner wall itself. Once we get a third of the device into the canal, it's important to lift toward the hand and straighten the hand out to allow smooth passage of the implant within the canal. The snorkel end is then released gently and we then observe the position of the snorkel within the inner wall itself. Tapping on the implant itself to, to push it against the canal and as well as pushing the snorkel end against the outer wall ensure adequate placement. It is quite normal and expected to see some blood reflux emanating from the insertion and from the snorkel end itself. Here our second eye stent is being placed, this time in a backhanded fashion, again approaching the angle at 30 degree angle approach. The self trephinating tip incised the inner wall and the main body of the device is slid into the canal by straightening the hand out and pulling toward us slightly to ensure smooth passage. The snorkel is then released from the implanter gently and again the tip is used to push the snorkel against the outer wall and tap the device to ensure it is well seated. It's important that the elbow of the device is placed fully within the canal itself. Viscoelastic is used to help visualization and move the blood away from the area of interest. Here our third eye stent is being used, again entering at a third degree angle. Once a third of the device is inside the canal, straighten the hand out, pull toward the incision slightly, and allow for smooth passage within the canal. It's important as we saw here that the eye moves very little to ensure that we're not torquing the eye and hitting the outer wall during the implantation. We can visualize the three implants being placed approximately two clock hours, two clock hours away from each other. Here a closer view shows the nice flush appearance of the snorkel end emanating from the inner wall. Towards the end of the case, irrigation and injection of Tripan Blue nicely shows the distal outflow passage. Note the three implants have been placed nasally and we can see a nice pattern of filling of the episcleral vessels here nasally, superior and infranasally, alternating with blanching with the irrigation from the eye handpiece. That this pattern is only present in the area nasally where the implants have been placed and is not present temporally.